right now on VFN TV. We are celebrating the 4th of July. Happy 4th of July. We're going to be talking about success secrets. We're going to go back and look at the actual signing of the Declaration of Independence. Listen to David Barton and what took place. We have so many wonderful things for you right now on VFN TV. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. Welcome to VFN TV and the daily VFN radio program where we're keeping the conversation light. That's L-I-G-H-T, light, with your host, Greg Lancaster. Happy 4th of July. Yes. Oh my goodness. Celebration time. This is John and we are celebrating. Listen, if you haven't really understood 4th of July and Declaration of Independence and our, and our blessing on our country, you should have beginning 12 years ago or 10 yeah. years ago at least, <laughs> and then went through eight years of like, we're going to lose it, and then we get to keep it. Uh, this is exciting days. It means so much more today, John. Yes, it does. More so, than hot dogs and hamburgers and fireworks, but it means yes. we get to keep our nation. We celebrate this awesome experiment called America right. that God's allowed us to have. I wish That's we, blessing the wish we had of the time world. to show this interview where they went on and asked college students, or at least, uh. and they asked them, you know, what, what is the 4th of July? celebrating and some of them said i can't tell you what some of them said mm -hmm. but it was not that it wasn't about it wasn't the independence <laughs> but there was, was one lady she knew exactly what it was about it was so refreshing and so many people are, are just protesting this and protesting that but they aren't standing on any anything solid mm -hmm. they don't even know what's going on they don't even know the reason the only way you, you, reason you can protest is because you have you're free you have your First Amendment rights to be able to protest, which this is the thing Constitution. Called the Bill of Rights Constitution. Which came after the Declaration of Independence, but prior to that, the king would just say, take off your head, off with your head, right? And it's such a beautiful yeah. document. It's 27 reasons laid out. Not you just one reason, yeah, like not taxation, taxation. Without representation. 27 reasons yeah. they gave for being able to leave Great Britain right. and, and, yeah. and the king. And um, so, so well written. It's really poetic. You're, talking, you're, you're, talking, you're talking about the Declaration of Independence. Yeah. So they wrote this letter to the king, which at that time was the one over America. That's right. And they really. said, here's 27 reasons why we're no longer going to be under you. Mm -hmm. And all of our rights come from God. I mean, they acknowledge God in that yeah. document that we're created in, in the image of our, our, our creator created us, gave us, gave us these rights. Unalienable rights. And, that, right? and that's America only works when we understand it's one nation under God. It's not, it can't be, if, it's, if we're not under God, we have to be under a king or under a dictator That's or right. under some sort of thing because God allows a nation to rise and he allows a nation to fall. He says when it will rise, he says when it will fall. If we're going to fall and we repent, he says this, you're not going to fall. And that's actually what happened to America about two years ago. You know, uh, God began to hear people cry out and pray. And he says very specifically through, I know, through Kim, Kim Clement in 2015, God heard the prayers. Others, he heard the prayers and he's turning and brought us to this day. And he's still letting us have our freedom and our independence. And it, it is just so, so very important. So we want to wish you a happy 4th of July. Uh, the Declaration of Independence, we're going to hear from David Barton what it's about. Yeah. But as a matter of fact, let's just go ahead and go there now. It's a perfect timing to hear from David Barton of Wall Builders. This man is packed with wisdom, documents, original documents, original letters. You know, him and the, um, I forget, the Mercury, Mercury One has yeah. uh, a, a just letters and clothing from, from different the people collections. and personal letters that proves that, you know, that, that, that our founding fathers had a relationship and a knowledge of God. And they also knew they had to have a unity of a community that wasn't bound around you have this is a state religion that you had your freedom to worship God freely. And so what, anyway, they wrote that way. As a matter of fact, here is David Barton explaining the details, really what this day is about, celebrating the 4th of July. Take a look. Hello, America. It's Dave Barton standing in for Glenn. Well, it's birthday time, America. Tomorrow is the 4th of July, and we'll celebrate our 236th birthday. So let's begin with a quick review. A lot of what happened in the decade leading up to our separation from Great Britain had been a lot of bad things. There had been the Hated Stamp Act. There was the Boston Massacre. There was the Boston Tea Party. There was the Boston Port Bill. There was the burning of Charleston. Uh, there were the Intolerable and the Quartering Acts. There were the battles of Lexington and Concord and Bunker Hill. There was the raid on Williamsburg. And there was lots of other bad stuff where the British attempted to take our freedoms and beat us into submission. And despite our many efforts to reconcile with Great Britain, even through all of those difficulties, 
the time finally arrived when the Founding Fathers no longer had any good options left of them. So, in the Continental Congress on June the 7th of 1776, Richard Henry Lee of Virginia made the following famous proposal that Congress approve a resolution declaring, quote, that these united colonies are and of right ought to be free and independent states. Now, Congress did not immediately act on his motion to separate from Great Britain, but five days later, on June the 11th, Congress appointed a committee of five founding fathers, Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Roger Sherman, and Robert Livingston, to draft a statement explaining to the world why the colonies were seeking independence. Congress then recessed for almost three weeks to let this committee do its work. On July the 1st, Congress reconvened and began consideration of Lee's resolution on whether America should separate from Great Britain. On July the 2nd, that resolution passed with not one state voting against it. Congress then proceeded to consider the document drafted by the Committee of Five, and for the next three days, Congress edited that document. They put some in here and took some out there, and, and finally, late in the morning of July the 4th, Congress officially adopted the Declaration of Independence. Congress then appointed a committee composed of John Adams and Ben Franklin and Thomas Jefferson to create a symbol or to create a national seal for the new nation. John Adams described what the three eventually decided on. He said, quote, The children of Israel in the wilderness, led by a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, Moses lifting up his wand and dividing the Red Sea, and Pharaoh in his chariot overwhelmed with the waters. And this motto, quote, Rebellion to tyrants is obedience to God. Interestingly, Jefferson adopted that same motto, Rebellion to tyrants is obedience to God, as his own personal motto, and when he became governor of Virginia, he also made it part of the state seal. But returning to the Declaration, after it was passed, a copy was carried to John Dunlap, the official printer to Congress, and late on the night of the 4th of July, Dunlap printed the first copy of the Declaration of Independence. And notice that the original Declaration contained the names of only two founding fathers at the bottom, John Hancock, President of Congress, and Charles Thompson, the Secretary of Congress. The next morning, on July the 5th, copies of the Declaration were dispatched by horse and rider to various legislative committees and assemblies throughout the states, as well as to the Continental Army and the militias. And three days later, on July the 8th, Colonel John Nixon took a copy of the Declaration. He stood outside on the steps of Independence Hall, and he read it aloud to a huge crowd that was assembled there. The Liberty Bell was then rung, and, and by the way, it's called the Liberty Bell because of the Bible verse from Leviticus 25.10 that's emblazoned around the top of the bell, which declares, Proclaim liberty throughout the land to all the inhabitants thereof. A week and a half later, on July the 19th, Congress decided to engross, or that is to handwrite in beautiful calligraphy, the entire Declaration of Independence on a large parchment so that it could be signed by all the members of Congress who had supported it. Then two weeks after that, on August the 2nd, the members of Congress signed that copy, or at least most of them signed the copy. Four of them signed it a few weeks later. Matthew Thornton actually signed it four months later. And founding father Thomas McKean signed it five years later. But his final signature completed the famous copy of the Declaration that's so recognizable today. One founder who wrote with great eloquence about those proceedings was John Adams. Now, John loved his wife Abigail deeply, and she loved John, and so the two of them regularly wrote each other back and forth with letters. And on the day after Congress voted to separate from Great Britain, John reported what they had done. He told Abigail, Yesterday, the greatest question was decided which ever was debated in America. And a greater, perhaps, never was nor will be decided among men. A resolution was passed without one dissenting colony that these united colonies are and of right ought to be free and independent states. You will see in a few days a declaration setting forth the causes which have impelled us to this mighty revolution and the reasons which will justify it in the sight of God and man. Adams then predicted what he thought future generations would do on the anniversary of that day, telling Abigail, I'm apt to believe that it will be celebrated by succeeding generations as the great anniversary festival. It ought to be commemorated as the day of deliverance by solemn acts of devotion to God Almighty. 
It ought to be solemnized with pomp and parade, with, with shows and games and sports and guns and bells and bonfires and illuminations from one end of this continent to the other, from this time forward forevermore. Notice, John Adams thought that we should celebrate American independence with parades and fireworks and athletic events and all sorts of festivities. But notice that he also said that we should celebrate it as the day of deliverance by solemn acts of devotion to God Almighty. John Adams believed that our Independence Day should be celebrated as a religious holiday, a day when we remembered God's hand of deliverance graciously extended over America. That's so powerful. I want to encourage you today. I mean, think about what this is about. Yeah, we're, we're celebrating, but what are we celebrating? God allowed us to have our independence. God, miraculous things took, pl took place. You know, George Washington lost battle after battle after battle, but all of a sudden, this general that was losing all these battles, mm. that had to constantly encourage his men, that had to tell Congress, you're going to have to pay these soldiers, and they were going to back out. Rag, you, ragtag, right? Yeah, all of a sudden, you know, this, 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 this miracle started happening, miracle after miracle. The wind was blowing a certain way, fog came in, this happened. It was just miracles. You know, God is involved in the cares of men. God is involved, and this is how it happens. Things just don't just happen. And the fact that it's gone this long, I believe it's the longest constitution in the history of the world after the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution was signed. And so you're looking at, man, that's why we're shooting off fireworks legally. You know, that's why we're actually uh, having a solemn moment. Let's pray. Now, let's just don't pray over the food here. Let's thank God for the independence. And guess what? If we're grateful for what God gives us, mm. He allows us to keep to it. To keep it, absolutely. And so uh, it's to be grateful, to realize, you know, liberty comes from God, that our rights come from God, and that... We uh, allow government, we, we don't have them to, to give us rights. We have them to protect the rights that we already have already. And our rights come from God. Our freedom comes from God. And it's interesting, they said that, you know, uh, uh, coming against a tyrant, you know, what's, yeah. what's, what's well, the um, rebellion, rebellion to tyrants is obedience, obedience to, to God. God. And so you look right now, right now they're trying, you have to understand what the adversary does. He tries to find people who are the ups and make them the downs. He tries to find people that are the rights and make them the left. So you can't believe what people are saying. Jesus said you have to actually find out what they're doing, what mm. their fruit is. And people are trying to say right now that the president of the United States is a tyrant. That's, if you look at the definition of a tyrant, that's far from a tyrant. This is a man who's not trying to run the country for, with a pen and a phone through executive orders. He's trying to get Congress to wake up and do their job. job. That actually is a constitutional leader right there. There's a man who's working with the Supreme Court to find leaders that come in to honor the Constitution. Tyrants would actually take a pen and take their phone and say, we're going around Congress. And I remember Valerie Jarrett saying on an interview with CPS when they interviewed her and they went to her office, which used to be the office of uh, the wife of uh, Bill, Bill Clinton, President Clinton, which was Hillary Clinton. It went to her office and he says, she said, he said, what are you doing? He says, we were just going around Congress. Mm. That is more of a tyrant, tyrant yeah. than somebody who's saying, Congress, do your job. Because we've got these balance of powers now, because they're constitutional powers that came after the Declaration of, Declaration of Independence. We have the executive branch, which is the president and his cabinet. We have the judiciary branch, which are the Supreme Court justices that we talk about, and all the smaller judges that go out throughout the land. And then you have the legislature branch. Well, those are the ones that are supposed to make the write laws. The laws write the laws. The executive branch is not, not supposed to write them. They're supposed to enforce them. And the, the, the judiciary branch is not supposed to write laws and make laws from the bench. They're supposed to f see if it actually matches up and fits the Constitution. If it's unconstitutional, then they say, this law is no good. But if it's constitutional, they say it's constitutional. That's it. They're not supposed to make laws. So you're looking. He's the opposite of that That's because right. he's saying, this thing needs to work. And so he's saying, come on, Congress, do your job. Come on, judiciary, do your job, but don't do their job. Back to the original intent yes. of the founders. Back to the original intent. And it's literally like draining the swamp right now, trying to change things. And there's people there that said they've been for us all along, that you're finding out they really weren't necessarily for us. Because if you're not for the Constitution, if you're not for the three equal branches of government, if you're not for what was written in the Declaration of Independence, which is 27 reasons why we wanted our independence so we could be under God, then it's like, you need to find another country because this country is not hmm. that country. And there's plenty, there's, there's a couple a lot of countries, countries out there that you, you can find too. But there's a reason why you're here because actually it's, it's a good country. So we have so much to celebrate. I want to encourage you to celebrate with more than just, just with food, but with celebration and, and tell your, your, your children what this is about. 
you know, have a, 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 ro a roll of the Constitution somewhere, you know, a fake scroll of it or something, and a, a duplicate of it. Yeah. Pull it up on, the, your, on your internet, your phone, read something from it. You know, play our program. You can go to our YouTube channel and be able to play our program on the 4th of July. But this is so important to remember. And thank God, he says, he talked about a solemn moment to honor God for allowing us to be here. And, you know, I took a lot of things for granted prior to those last days. Mm. <laughs> I thought we had it bad before. I'm thinking, we're going to lose this puppy. And God was giving us dreams and visions and just telling us what's going to happen if things don't turn. And I have, have no doubt whatsoever that God has allowed us to be here. And, it's, and by the way, it is very important to be tied in how we're supporting Israel, how our president decided from day one, the first thing he did is make a phone call to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and said, resolved. Relationship resolved, fixed, not an issue. It was just beautiful. And that, that God says specifically, is one of the reasons why America has been brought to this point. So encourage your Congress and your senators to be able to say, you know, stand with Israel and if you don't stand with Israel, listen, we need to, you need to find a different occupation. No doubt. And uh, it just makes a huge, huge difference. But listen, after this break, hit, you know, comment below. Let us know about what you yes. think. I know all of you are not from America. And we're so grateful. And I know some of you talked to me and said you wish you had a constitution and you had uh, the same thing that God's blessed America with. And my, our prayers for you is that you would have this kind of freedom so that you have the, the freedom to be able to, to succeed and to start your own businesses and to worship God freely and, and, to, and to, to marry and to drive cars. Some of you are in nations that they repress you even from driving cars. And uh, this is what it is. So I wanna encourage you, we pray that God will bless your government with that. You're free to be able to copy it, pull it down and run for office there and support it. And uh, it's, it's so important to have freedom. And we're able to bless so many people too through our yeah. nation. We got to go to a break, but when we get back from this break. We're going to be talking to you about a success secret, specifically from Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos is the founder of Amazon, Amazon.com. People talk about him. He doesn't have a lot of hair, but he's got a lot of money. He's the richest man <laughs> in the world. In the world right now, and we're going to talk about workplace uh, balance versus life harmony. We will get back for this break. See you in a minute. We'll be right back. Everybody yes. will love it. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. I mean, when you love the Word of God, I mean, it's exciting in your abiding time. By the way, beginning to abide now, mm. learning how to abide with God is so important because he says, apart from abiding in me, Jesus said, you can't even do any of this. And we have a simple plan for you. It's at iabide.org. You know, most people want to abide. They want to they spend that time with God, but they, they need a plan. We have a free plan for you. It's at, it's at iabide.org. You just fill out that little simple request thing. It comes right to you in your email, and it's a great step-by-step -step beautiful. how you can begin to abide with him. Listen, you want to begin to hang out with the king since his kingdom is manifesting. Right. It's going gonna, gonna to be the greatest thing he's ever done in the face of the earth. It's about to happen. You want to know the king. What's the most common error made by parents in disciplining their children? I believe it's the inappropriate use of anger in attempting to manage boys and girls. Unfortunately, most adults rely primarily on their own irritation to make children cooperate. One teacher said on a national television program, I like being a professional educator, but I hate the daily task of teaching. My children are so unruly that I have to stay mad at them all the time just to control the classroom. How utterly frustrating that would be and how ineffective. Disciplinary action influences behavior. Anger does not. I'm convinced, in fact, that adult irritation actually creates disrespect in the minds of kids. They can see that our frustration is caused by our inability to control the situation. We represent justice to them, and yet we're on the verge of tears as we flail the air with our hands and shout empty threats and warnings. Now, I'm not recommending that parents and teachers conceal their legitimate emotions from their children. My point merely is that anger often becomes a tool used for the purpose of controlling children. It's ineffective, and it can be damaging to the relationship between generations. Instead, try taking a little corrective discipline that your children will care about, and then administer it with cool. Welcome back to VFN TV with your host, Greg Lancaster. Welcome, welcome back. Listen, we are so into your success. As we always say, 
your success is our success, our success is your success, and our success together, together is, is kingdom, kingdom success. success. That's what God wants us to do. He says, my kingdom will be preached to all, then the end will come. He tells us specifically to go into all the nations and make disciples mm. of nations. When you do that, you've got to impact the culture. And basically, there's seven spheres of cultures. And we call that mountain, seven mountains. So we talk about success. It doesn't matter what you're doing. When you're doing it for the Lord and balancing that out, it's just, that's what you do. That's, that's, what that's you how do. you bear fruit and, 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 and do what God expects from you in your life. You're there because God allowed you to be there. Now it's time to be a bright light there. And as a matter of fact, Jeff Bezos, he's the founder of Amazon, and he paid the price over a lot of years, oh, making yeah. no money, reinvesting things. But now it's paid off because now it's, you know, it's everybody's the buying man their in stuff. The world. <laughs> yeah, buying their stuff from Amazon and uh, and Whole Foods and, and Whole Foods, everything and, else, and toothpaste, and I don't know what else. <laughs> what's, what's he talking about the balance here? Well, this is so important because he talks about. A lot this, is, of times, this is a VFNKB success secret. This is VFNKB success secret. Yeah. And so important because a lot of people today in, in their careers are always talking about a work-life balance. And this question was asked to Jeff, and he really lays it out pretty plainly. He says, instead of talking about a, a work-life balance, what we need to be talking about is a work-life uh, work -life harmony. I want you to watch Jeff now. So does that include work-life balance and all those things? Yes, but I would I use I teach um, three uh, leadership classes a year at Amazon. I'm a part of it. They're bigger classes, but I come in and teach a session. And I always talk about work-life balance, except I like to use the phrase work-life harmony rather than balance, because to me, balance implies a strict trade, whereas I find that when I am happy at work, I come home more energized, I'm a better husband, a better dad, and when I'm happy at home, I come in and better boss and better colleague. And so that, that um, it's not, you could be out of work and be, have terrible work-life balance. You know, even though you've got all the time in the world, you, right. you could just feel like, oh my God, you know, I'm miserable and you would be draining energy. And so you have to find that harmony. It's a much better word. And I think for most people, it's about meaning. People want to know that they're doing something interesting and useful. And That's so important. I like the idea of talking about harmony because you can play one note on a piano and then <laughs> another note on a piano, another note on a piano. Yeah. But so many people's lives are like that. Okay, now I'm playing the work song. Tum. I'm playing the home note, boom. Yeah. But they never harmonize it when you can play a chord and it just kind of all fits and it's like that gliding part yeah. of your life. Well, they're living a lot of compartmentalized life. This is yes. what I do at work and this is what I do at home. And they're treating their, their work like a J-O-B, like a job, time yeah. to make the donuts, instead of uh, you know a calling, a, a platform, a place where as believers, we can glorify God, we can bear fruit, we can be successful. And we can use that, that platform that the Lord's given us as a place of influence. So yes. instead of dreading this thing called work, we can celebrate this thing called work because our success really is God's success. Yes. And we're, we're using that for His glory. Yeah, he says very specifically that, that how we work is how we, how we uh, glorify Him. He says, you know, submit to your boss as if you were submitting to the Lord. If he asks you to do something, do it. He also says, boss, don't be tyrannical leaders. You're accountable right. to anybody else is accountable. But he says, go and let your good deeds be see, seen by men. In other words, work hard and let men see your deeds, but give glory to God and how you were able to do it. And he says, and then the Father gets glory by that. Yeah. And just I mean, if you have a business, you know, if you have that one employee that talks about Jesus but doesn't work well, <laughs> it's very like, and especially if you're a Christian, like, please quit bringing Jesus please up. You're really don't hurting mention us here. the Lord here. <laughs> but the very fact that you know, if you if you just are just doing well, you're honoring, you're in, in tune with the vision. Your home life's not calling you at work and just freaking you out and arguing on the phone. You know, Elijah did this, Isaiah did that. You know, all that kind of stuff going on, you know. And it probably never happens. But if that was going on, you know, that just brings in your work life. It's like you got to harmonize that. Yeah, and I have to say, yes. I have to say, I have to say, I better not say that. No, actually, when we were young, when we were young. We were young? We, yeah, we were young <laughs> once. And, and my mother was a deputy marshal. Ah. She was a deputy marshal, and bless her heart, oh my goodness. We had, I had two sisters and me, and we would all three get on the phone and talk about things about 
you know, she did this and there was going on. All to and your she's mother a, while she's a deputy, working. She's a marshal. A marshal. A marshal with a gun. Does she's, she have a gun? Yeah, she has a gun. And we're like talking. And she didn't bring it home for us. And, it was a, and I'm like, bless her heart. You know what I'm saying? And she put up with that. <laughs> yeah, she really did. She really did. And of course, we didn't. Our frontal lobe wasn't developed. We didn't know. understand that. Yet. But the fact is, is that. But what happens when your home life's in balance and your work life's in balance in harmony? Then you're not worried about home when you're at work or worried about that's work right. when you're at home. That's right. And so that's good because so often we think about I need to be able to manage time. But the truth is you've got to be able to manage the events in your life with the right value system, which sure. would be harmony, right? Yeah, absolutely. The other thing that I think that people deal with too is that they're expecting too much from their job in the sense that expecting everything from it. Yeah. They want their their job or their career to add meaning to their life instead of you add meaning to your work. <laughs> right. I mean, you're the one that adds meaning because you're in that position. You've just taken that position to a whole new level. It's a different mindset to be, be able to embrace. Yeah, it reminds me of somebody speaking recently on leadership and they said that uh, they, they came to him, you know, and he has this whole thing about motivating folks and he said, people are saying, I don't know, you know, I've been at this job and I don't, I don't, I think I need to find something else. He's like, you've only been here six months. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and what it is, they're expecting to find this this value in that, not realizing sure. they're supposed to bring value there. And what happens is when you show up as value, you'll find value in that. Absolutely. Because, yeah, it's like an ebb and flow aspect of it. it. It's that harmony we're talking about. Yeah. The other thing, too, is that at VFNKB, we want to yeah. empower you. We want to remind you that God is into your success and that God cares about your work. And so, you know, there's been a huge feeling. People think, well, maybe God doesn't care about what I do, that right. 50, 60, maybe 70 hours a week, but right. he only cares about this thing I do one day a week at right. a building. Right. No, God cares about your entire life. It all hits and a scale. With you. Yes, it all hits a scale. There is no divide or difference between the secular and the sacred. It's all sacred to the Lord. Right. That's so true. I know this. Listen, we have a book. It's, you know, it's talking about strategies for yes. fighting for your success. It literally is a fight, but it's not a physical fight. And we want to give you a free copy of it. It's available now in a pre-release. Pre-release. And you go to vfnkb.com and sign up for your free copy of it. But it gives you strategies. Listen, we are called to go into the world, not to be separate than it. We're called to go in to be light in the midst of darkness. We've got to quit screaming at darkness and start being the light that God's called us to be. Mm. But you've got to fight to do that. It's not necessarily an easy thing to do. But he's, he calls that the good fight of faith. And he tells us this, too, that we have to actually understand that he's given us these talents you don't that stuff you're able to do he's given that to you and he expects interest he expects you to have done something with it and what the adversary wants to do is keep you all head all stirred up and keep you stirred up all the time and all of a sudden next thing you know you're standing before god after the end of your life and you're going he's going what did you do with what i gave you yeah and you're gonna say i was busy somebody gave me a hard time i never got to go out here but listen we want to hear your comments you know, what are your thoughts about the success secrets? What are your thoughts about you know, what we're talking about in this program? We'd love to hear from you. Write to us, friends, at vfnkb.com. We'd love to hear your comments and what you have to say about the program. Father God, I just lift up our audience right now, and I pray a blessing over them. I thank you, Lord, for that. that give them balance in their yes. life, harmony in their life, Father, in their job, and the, every aspect of their life, Father. And Lord, we ask you right now, Lord, end abortion, send revival, send a third grade awakening, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless and thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. I'm your host, Greg Lancaster, and we're so glad that you've joined us. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfnkb.com. I've enjoyed our time together. God bless.